So in this video, which could prove to be a little bit longer than uh, you might hope for, but we'll break it up into parts. In this video, we're looking at the LCR, that's the uh, inductor capacitor resistive circuit. Um, and there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that we tie together with all of the AC that we've considered. First of all, let's draw the, the circuit. Here's our variable supply. You would typically have a, um, a frequency rating, some frequency um, that it's operating at. You would have your resistor, it actually doesn't matter what order you put these things in, your capacitor, capacitor, and your inductive component, uh, all in series with each other. This line I just drew was the iron core. So um, that's that's what it would look like. We now want to um, look at the, um, sorry, explain everything just gave me a little help file so I paused. Um, to read it. We now want to look at the um, voltage uh, supplies and this is where I can use lots of cool colors and the instantaneous voltage uh, to look at the phase relationships of each of these things all together and really there should be no surprises here this is your voltage here and this is your time um, this is just a way to uh, express what you've already seen um, in your previous um, videos related to this. So if we first of all consider the voltage of the um, of the resistor, and we'll just consider that as a nice sine curve just to give us a standard approach to that. And then uh, we better label that, we'll call that VR which is the voltage across the resistor. I won't draw on the voltmeter because it gets a bit messy a bit quick there. Um, and if we have the uh, voltage across the capacitor, remember the voltage across the the capacitor lags behind um, the voltage across the resistor. That means it peaks um, at a later time. So if we're looking on the time scale, it's actually going to hit its peak after. So it's going to be constantly uh, lagging behind okay, uh, the um, voltage across the um, resistor. Um, let's just draw that in. Trying to draw it nicely. There we go. I've got a phone call. I will pause. Okay, so where was I? The um, that's voltage across the capacitor lagging behind because it reaches its peak later on the time scale. Then we want to have the voltage across the inductor, um, which is going to lead. So it's going to hit its uh, peak before uh, the resistor, which is our red one. Remember, it starts getting pretty messy looking, but when you draw diagrams like this, it starts being pretty cool as well um, and it's also a little bit just making the point about the inductor and the capacitor it should be exactly out of phase or opposite phase might be a better way to put it uh, to the inductor now this is where it gets quite tricky in some senses anyway um, the supply I'll just write in that um, our green is the voltage oops it's blue I don't want that voltage across the capacitor there we go the supply voltage um, what sort of funky color can I use for this? Um, we'll just see how this goes. The supply voltage, um, for how I've drawn it, is still going to be the sum. Um, the supply voltage is always uh, voltage across the resistor plus voltage across the capacitor plus voltage across the inductor. And that applies for any single point in time. So if you take the RMS values, it won't work. But you have to take the voltage at any point in time. Now, if we look at this first bit, um, just just here, um, we've got a positive and a negative cancelling each other out, and we're going to have our mark right in the middle. At the next point, we've got those two are basically both at zero. I've drawn it a little bit sloppily, so it's going to hit there on the line. That's, And then we've got these two points plus that negative. That negative is the same as that positive, so we end up with a point in there. And what's happening is the sum of the voltages actually follow following the resistance in this case. So we would actually have, so I won't draw it over the top, but um, just follow the points. We would actually have the um, voltage of the supply following the voltage of the resistance. That's not always going to be exactly the case. Um, it's just that the way I've drawn this, the magnitude of VL, or if you like the, yeah, the RMS values might be a good way, the averages are the same, but the magnitude of VL is the same as the magnitude of VC, the peak voltage. Um, if the peak voltage for VL was uh, was different, um, which color do we use for VL is this one here, this is the green. Um, if, if that was larger, OK, 
okay, then we would get um, a, a sort of a skewing of what's going on and a shifting of the phase relationship for the supply voltage. But this is still going to be true no matter what. Okay, so that's voltage and phase. Impedance and phase, um, if we just sketch a quick diagram here, and I'll just stick with the one uh, boring black colour because otherwise we go on a little bit too long. We're still going to have our, um, our voltage and our um, impedance, our reactance for the inductor, leading to the voltage uh, across the resistor and the resistance itself. So remember these are the phase for each of the reactances and resistances follows their respective um, voltages. Um, and the uh, VC and XC. They follow it in there. So um, what you have to do when you're adding these and considering the phase or diagrams both for voltage and for um, reactance um, and uh, well, impedance, I guess, yeah. We, we have to um, consider which one of these is larger, the resistance, uh, sorry, the reactance of the inductor or the reactance of the capacitor or the voltage of the inductor and voltage of the capacitor. And in this case, we can see um, it's the, the inductant, uh, inductor's reactance is larger, so we're going to end up with a positive on this side because it'll be XL minus XC to get that. If the other one was larger, if XC was larger, it would be XC minus XL, and we'll see it down on this side. But then our, um, our total um, uh, supply voltage phase relationship is going to be that angle there. Because remember we shift our, our magnitude uh, across to do a nice vector addition of these phasors. Our um, voltage of the supply and our impedance are going to have the same phase angle which is uh, quite handy there for some calculations later on. Remember the current always follows the resistance, so that's going to sit in that phase angle, uh, which is just zero, or we usually use that resistance one as a reference point, and that just makes things so much easier. So if we go to our, uh, what about, that's impedance and phase, our last one is resonance, um, the resonant frequency, and uses of simple harmonic motion. Now, uh, if I quickly go to my diagram uh, just here, or well, maybe that's a bit messy now, but um, bear with me, I'll use it anyway. Um, when our voltage o over, the, over the inductor and our voltage over the capacitor are equal and opposite, which also means our reactance of the capacitor and reactance of the inductor are equal and opposite, opposite phase, then um, your supply voltage exactly follows the voltage of the resistor and um, we have a special case here where um, the, uh, the circuit is in a resonant state um, that is you will um, uh, <laughs> that frequency is going to be particularly uh, comfortable if you, if you like for the circuit so the circuit will enjoy being in that state, we're sort of personifying it there, and, and that frequency will be the most stable frequency for the circuit. What that whole kind of awkward description I was trying to give means is the current will be maximum in the circuit at that point because you won't have um, any reactants working against the current. You'll have the supply voltage and the voltage across the resistor being the same and the, um, the, the current following it all in the same phase. And that'll be great and it'll, it'll be wonderful. And where that's particularly useful, um, and it's very, very useful, is in receiving circuits. So if you think you have an antenna of some description, this is a common description of an antenna. There's your inductor, there's your resistor, and then you might have a, a variable capacitor capacitor um, and this is probably ground and then you have this this um, uh, you, your yeah you, what, what what happens is <laughs> coming through the airwaves you have electromagnetic radiation that uh, will cause a changing magnetic field from the electromagnetic radiation you know radio waves um, that will cause a changing uh, magnetic field in the inductor which will lead to an induced voltage across it inducing a current in the in the circuit um, and <coughs> excuse me 
that small current can be amplified and a, and a signal laid on top of it to um, so what you do you could either switch it on or off rapidly or you could have, have a modifying amplitude um, so that's how you can get the, both the amplitude modulation and the frequency modulation um, and uh, how fast you switch it on and off is your frequency modulation I think, I'm not 100% sure about that actually I've got a few niggling ideas that that might not be perfect but in a digital reception um, you have to just turn it on or off at a set frequency and um, that frequency would usually be the resonant frequency of the circuit where you produce the maximum um, uh, current so if we can just get you a bit of a graph um, you've got a, and this is your frequency across here um, you've got a point where your, your circuit's going to support this wonderful perfect frequency if not usually the resonant frequency and this might be um, on the vertical scale here uh, might be the current in the circuit um, <coughs> so that when you're at the resonant frequency you produce a nice um, big current and it can be amplified and taken off to drive a speaker and then you've got an audio signal transmitted through um, or it could be um, the receiver of your cell phone on um, have you heard of your quad band cell phones they run on four different um, frequencies so you would have four different aerials or one aerial that's tuned to pick up four different things so there'll be four um, of these LCR uh, sections in parallel with each other um, and one of them would be picked up nicely and you can actually tune it nicely with this variable capacitor or, or a variable inductor usually variable capacitors are more reliable than a variable inductor though um, and that's more or less how it works the only um, <coughs> Excuse me. Other useful thing. I'll just go back to my notes so that I'm not skipping things. Um, uh, no. Okay, we won't talk about it. But the other useful thing is SHM, simple harmonic motion. Um, simple harmonic motion is another form of resonance. Oh, that reminds me. Actually, we can do something. We can do a little bit of mathematical thing. But simple harmonic motion is a form of um, resonance, and this is a form of resonance. One's electrical. Um, a version and one is a mechanical version and they're, they're all related um, in very similar looking equations so if you remember um, the equations all have that um, 2 pi uh, and then a square root part um, there's also a 2 pi and a square root part for this um, and I'll leave it to you to explore that in a little bit more detail but I'll just really quickly um, give you the math side of this for um, at resonance um, at just separate all of that out. So, so at resonance, where the resonant frequency is F naught, um, the reactance of the inductor equals the reactance of the capacitor. And those of you very mathematically minded might already have seen that you can then uh, do your one uh, sorry omega L equals um, omega. 1 over omega c, or even better, 2 pi f naught, because there's the resonant frequency L, equals 1 over 2 pi um, f naught c. And you can rearrange this for, um, for f naught to find out what the resonant frequency for a particular value of capacitor and inductor is. Um, and when you, or you can, yeah, when you, when you reduce all of this down, you end up with f naught, the resonant frequency, equals 1 over 2 pi um, square root LC. Um, and if you take your simple harmonic motion equations um, for a spring and for a pendulum, you can put them in this form and that looks basically the same. 1 over 2 pi and then a, a square root part. Um, it's, it's really just to do with that um, uh, periodic nature of what's going on. But anyway, that's, that's a little bit of a rambling thing. My brain's a little bit fuzzy because um, we're overdue for the birth of my um, second child and um, we're just <laughs> hovering anxiously on that at night time while the other child doesn't um, sleep. But you don't need to hear about that, that's just a little bit of a personal touch. Thank you for coming to the Physics Lounge and I think actually this might be the last video to round off everything on the whole website. But again, you don't need to know that and you probably don't care, you just want to find out about the physics. So hopefully you've found something useful. Thank you very much. Have a good day, evening, whatever.